Hello and welcome to another episode in this unscripted Lean Stacks technology instruction series. I hope you've been keeping up with the unscripted series. It's been quite fun for me and I hope it's informational for you. So today we're going to talk about updating server packages. Uh, if you recall in the last video uh, we demonstrated uh, kind of the beginner's version of how to provision an EC2 instance in Amazon Web Services. In this episode, we'll connect uh, to that EC2 instance and update the, the server packages using the uh, package manager that comes available on the Amazon Linux flavor of the Linux operating system. So let's get started. I'll click on the EC2 service. Uh, I'm logged into the AWS console um, and here you're seeing a listing of all the AWS services available. Uh, let's select the EC2 service. And as the EC2 dashboard loads up, um, I have the menu of um, kind of subsections of the EC2 service on the left side. Um, then at the top of the dashboard, it kind of provides a, an overview snapshot of the EC2 resources I have provisioned uh, within the current AWS region that I'm viewing. Um, so as I demonstrated in, in the last episode in this series, um, there's a variety of AWS regions or data centers around the globe. We are currently using the U.S. West Oregon Data Center. So the resources displayed on the dashboard are specific uh, to the AWS region uh, that I've currently selected. So let's go to the EC2 instances area. Uh, the top panel is, is a list of all of the EC2 instances that I currently have provisioned in this AWS region. Um, and the bottom panel uh, consists of four tabs that display information about the selected instances. Um, right now, as you can see with the blue highlighted selection, uh, we're looking at the details for instance EV001. Okay, so today's episode again is simply about updating the packages on the server. So first, let's SSH to the server. So I've opened a terminal window um, and I've gone to the directory. If you recall, you when you provision an EC2 instance, you select a key pair, uh, which is used to authenticate you to the server when you're accessing it via SSH. As you can see here, I have a leanstacksdemo.pem file, uh, which I've uh, use the chown or chown command uh, to set the permissions level to be read only for the owner of the file, which is the permissions expressed numerically is 400 or 400. Um, so I will use this PEM or key pair file to SSH to this server. The other thing that I need to SSH to this server is the public DNS. So I will copy that from the dashboard. So the SSH command is simply SSH-I. The path to my key pair file, which since I'm in that directory, is simply the name of the file. The username on all EC2 provision servers is EC2 user at that public DNS. I can use either the public IP address or the public DNS name. Um, I typically pick the public DNS name. Either one will work. Uh, SSH on my local machine is confirming that I want to store uh, this DNS name in the known host file on my local machine. I will say yes. Uh, my host adds that address um, so that the next time I SSH to this machine, it, it won't ask me to confirm that. Then we see the banner displayed indicating that I've you know, successfully logged into the server. You'll also notice that when I was on my local machine, um, my prompt uh, reflected my local username and the host name of, of my machine. Now that I'm on the server, uh, you see that I'm logged in as EC2 user 
at the host name uh, of this server, this EC2 instance. So congratulations, we're successfully, we've successfully SSH'd to the server. Um, and as you can see, the server is letting us know that we have one package needed uh, for security updates. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna clear my console. Let's go ahead and apply those security updates. So to uh, yum is the package manager used uh, within Enterprise Linux, whether it's Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS, or Amazon Linux, which, which is based or derived from CentOS. So uh, in order to uh, see what packages are available and uh, update uh, this particular server, you will use the yum update command. However, we need to request administrator privileges uh, to update the packages. So let's use the sudo command to elevate our privilege level and then simply type yum up, oops, update. So yum goes and searches the Amazon uh, package repositories. Um, Amazon Linux uh, searches Amazon's package repositories uh, for a list of all available package updates. As you can see, there's one package available. It happens to be the Amazon Linux kernel itself, version 4.4.14 and so forth, as you can see here. Um, and yum is prompting us if it's okay to download and install this package. If there was more than one package available, um, they would all be listed here. Um, so if I was simply seeing what packages are available for update, but I didn't want to update them, I could press N uh, for no and do it at a later time. However, we want to proceed with installing this uh, important security upgrade to our kernel. So we will say yes and press enter or Y and press enter. Uh, you see the kernel is downloaded. And right now the operating system is installing this kernel uh, onto our virtual server. Okay, uh, our server has completed installing the kernel. It is complete. Um, anytime you install uh, a Linux kernel, uh, the operating system, whether, whether you run Ubuntu or, or some other flavor of Linux on your local machine, or you're on a server, the Linux kernel, uh, when it's upgraded requires that the machine is rebooted for that new kernel to be loaded because it's it's loaded at boot time. So let's go ahead and, and reboot uh, our server. Now there's two ways to do that. Um, one, I can simply type sudo again to elevate my privileges, uh, the local EC2 users privileges technically, uh, to the uh, administrator or root level and use the reboot command. The reboot command is simply an alias for the shutdown minus R which means reboot uh, command. Um, the other way we can do this is to use the AWS console. So if I return to the AWS console and, in, and I pay close attention to ensure that I have only selected the EC2 instance that I wish to reboot, I can use the Actions menu, go to Instance State, and select Reboot. This will reboot uh, any instances which you've selected in the top panel of this screen. That's why you need to be very careful that you only select the instances that you wish to reboot. So I will actually return to my terminal window. I will clear the console and type sudo reboot. So the operating system, in this case our server, sends a broadcast message saying the server is being shut down for reboot and the SSH connection is terminated. As you can see from my prompt, um, I am now back on my local machine. So 
when we look at the EC2 uh, dashboard, the instances page, notice that there wasn't even a blip uh, in the instance state. Um, the status checks are still up and running. Um, if we look at our, our monitoring tab for this server, um, you know, that this is only updated uh, every few seconds. However, you know, there's nothing to indicate that anything is really going on with this server because the reboot happens so quickly with the Linux operating system. In fact, at this time, um, the server is almost certainly back up and running um, and available for us to SSH to it again. So again, I will SSH to it, and this time you'll see that, that there's nothing available to update on the server. So I'll demonstrate that the, the packages have indeed been applied. So here you see I, I'm now, as you can see from the prompt, I have SSH into the server. I did not receive any broadcast messages um, that the system requires any updates. However, I can use my sudo yum update command again and as you can see from the, the yum package manager it's telling me that you're running all of the latest packages um, there are no packages marked for update at this time so there's nothing for us to do so this concludes today's episode I hope this has been informative. I know for many viewers perhaps this is a bit remedial, but it's a very important skill to have and to understand how to update packages on a Linux server because many of these packages are uh, have very important updates, security updates, um, they're patching holes in your systems and vulnerabilities to your systems. Um, so for many smaller organizations that don't have a dedicated Linux administrator or uh, development operations staff member, um, this, is, this is important to know how to do this and set up a schedule on a routine basi basis to perform this type of server level maintenance to protect your applications from any vulnerabilities. I want to thank you again for watching another unscripted LeanStacks technology instruction episode. As always, if you'd like to find out more information about LeanStacks, go to LeanStacks.com.